It is probably the more exacerbated beefs I've seen. T.I. thinks there won't be any more animosity between the two titans of hip-hop, Drake and Kendrick Lamar, despite some calling their recent beef the biggest rap fight ever. Welcome back, it's your host Nancy Brown. If you are new here, make sure you have subscribed to our YouTube channel. All this stuff can't be true. The seasoned Atlanta rapper gave his opinions on Drizzy and K-Dot's future direction during an appearance on DJ Woo Kid's Woo's House podcast on Thursday, May 23rd. Everything everybody's saying can't be true. Like, good God. <laughs> he added, I got respect for both of them and I think they both phenomenal hit makers. I'm just waiting on the tour. After the disagreement, the only thing that's gonna sell is the reunion. After that, T.I. was asked if he would be interested in seeing J. Cole join the big three on this fictitious tour. I don't think he'd want to see himself on the tour. He joked, referencing Cole's decision to back out of the battle involving Kendrick and Drake. Uh, all this shit they saying can't be true. Rap fights are not new to T.I. when the Atlanta rapper was at odds with Shoddy Low. He traveled to Lowe's neighborhood to film the music video for the diss track What Up? What's Hopnin'? He is capable of showing contempt. Nevertheless, T.I. is not happy with how the Drake vs. Kendrick Lamar match transpired. I did most of this in for the uh, the double entendres. Yeah. In a recent appearance on Big Boy TV, he talked about the aftermath of the conflict and claimed that some other rappers who attempted to drop in 2024 have suffered as a result. Quadruple entendre in the metaphor, skill in which they present their art. Rappers lying was something T.I. didn't give a damn about, to put it plainly. To him, it was just another aspect of the game. He admitted to the radio host that his attention is drawn to the writing and wordplay. Yeah. You know, I think, um, I think it's good for the game. The legend from Atlanta expressed less optimism about the impact the conflict has had on other artists. He made the point that, in terms of hip-hop, Drake and Dot drank up all the oxygen, thus drowning out everything else. They done kinda fucked it up for some other people who were planning to drop. T.I. also discussed J. Cole's choice to stay out of the fight with Big Boy. T.I. was cordial, despite the rapper receiving criticism from other industry veterans for caving in. I feel like he chose peace and tranquility, he noted. You got to have thick skin we don't know where that would take him. That was quite mature of him. Recently, there has been a desire for people to hear from Joe Budden. All things considered, this is a result of the ongoing fight between Drake and Kendrick Lamar. Budden has emerged as one of the most adored cultural critics. Even though he might be irritating at times, listening to him express his opinions is always amusing. Fans are especially interested in learning about his opinions on the Kendrick Lamar fight because he has previously been a harsh critic of Drake. Following Kendrick's release of Not Like Us on SETI, Budden joined DJ Academics on a live stream. He asserted that Drizzy was currently losing at this point. Although Drake did not give us a timestamp record, he thought that it was vital. Rather, he delivered what felt like a capitulation with The Heart Part 6. The most recent episode of the Joe Budden podcast had a discussion of the beef and an admission of how much Joe enjoys Not Like Us. He even made fun of Ish, who seems to be supporting Drake, by using the song. Ish remained sitting on the couch next to Ice, but everyone else got up and started dancing as soon as Joe turned on the song. It was an amusing moment that proves Kendrick may have the greatest song of them all. Some claim that Not Like Us is a part of family matters, but it's really getting people out of their chairs. It only proves that Kendrick is a hitmaker, despite the false accusations of others that his songs are uninteresting. Did you realize niggas <laughs> is mad because our opinion on the beef between Drake and Kendrick Lamar? After hearing the criticism of Cameron and Mace's rendition of Kendrick Lamar's Euphoria, the artists are now confronting the issue head on. Why we can't have our opinion? <laughs> the much-awaited Euphoria, Kendrick Lamar's reaction to Drake, was eventually released earlier this week. The diss track has now elicited strong responses from both sides of the argument, as was to be expected. Secondly, this is what I want to say. According to Cameron and Mace, Drizzy has emerged as the winner thus far. It appears, though, that many of their viewers don't agree. And this is not the start of problem with anybody. In the most recent episode of the Key Podcast, which was released on Thursday, May 2nd, the rappers turned podcasters informed their listeners that their grievances were unfounded. East Coast niggas is not as big on the coast shit as y'all are on the coast shit. Cameron said to his co-host, Listening to Euphoria today. How you felt about that? <laughs> Overall, the song is highly critical, implying that Drake may have erred in his decision to become involved in the dispute. Six minutes in length and packed with bars, Lamar's song dissected Drake's whole career. In the song, Drake receives criticism for being a scam artist. It also touched on Drizzy's choice to stay out of the spotlight when Pusha T was around. All things considered, it's a harsh song, and many now claim that Kendrick is winning the feud. Mace and Cameron seem to have different ways of thinking. Cameron and Mace talked about Kendrick's latest diss tune on their podcast, It Is What It Is. Who's winning the battle to you right man? Drake is definitely winning. Mace claimed that Kendrick was responding too slowly, while the two rappers who are now podcast hosts still believe that Drake is winning their feud. 
In the last two and a half weeks, Drake released two diss singles. He got into trouble with Tupac Shakur's estate because he used artificial intelligence to mimic the late rapper's voice. Drake has been sharing pictures on Instagram and participating in online games. Fans have been waiting for Kendrick to respond all this time. Mace felt the song was good, but it ought to have been released sooner. It, it took a while for him to get, you wait a while, it gotta be like out of this world. When Cameron asks Mace about his overall impressions of the record, he responds that he felt it was alright. Mace also believed that the record would have been more successful and should have been released sooner. I think Drake is running the euphoria that really, really moved me. Jokingly, Cameron questioned why Kendrick needed to answer right away after Mace had taken so long to release his Cameron diss track Oracle earlier. Mace had to gather himself after the two rappers seemed to take a good jab. In the end, Mace claims that the diss didn't reveal anything novel about Drake, suggesting that most of the information heard on the song has already been covered. Fuck with Kendrick, but that shit was going on the cob. Gilly the Kid doesn't like Kendrick Lamar's latest diss song, Euphoria, which criticizes Drake in the midst of their continuing conflict. You know what's crazy, man? The light skin niggas is winning, man. Three to nothing. In a video that was shared on social media on Tuesday, the million dollars worth of game presenter shared his initial thoughts on the song. Gilly says he believes the song is cheesy and that Drake is up 2 0 in the beef while filming himself in his car. Drake up 2 to nothing. Chris Brown up 1 to nothing. Just take me back. I remember in the late 80s light skinned NS ran everything up to the late 80s. Then Nino Brown pistol whipped every light skinned Anna in New Jack City. Then they had it bad all the way up to Steph Curry and Chris Brown and Clay Thompson and Drake. Now the light skinned NS doing what they want. Yeah, I'm modest with the hopes of being accepted. It's finally here, after weeks of conjecture. Yes, Kendrick Lamar is back, and he couldn't be happier, during which the six god is called out frequently and directly. Kendrick once makes a fatherhood related jab at Drake, whose son with Sophie Brussox was a major focal point of the 2018 Pusha T feud. I got a son to raise, but I can see you don't know nothing about that. Kendrick's much awaited like that follow up is first introduced to listeners with some composed observations on witnessing someone's superpowers get neutralized. The song then builds up speed and finally erupts into a tirade of bars aimed at the person who denies the existence of a Summer Games sequel. After claiming to be the biggest hater three minutes in, Kendrick lists some of his Drake-specific targets of that hate, including, this ain't been about critics, not about gimmicks, not about who the greatest. It's always been about love and hate, now let me say I'm the biggest hater. I hate the way that you walk, the way that you talk. I hate the way that you dress. Kendrick then goes on to say that the bitches you fuck are people who confuse themselves with real women, adding further hate to this. The co-founder of PG Lang clarifies that he is not just speaking for himself, but also expressing what the culture feeling. With a size seven men zone. Ever since Kendrick Lamar attacked Drake on his song like that, which he co-wrote with Future and Metro Boomin, fans have been waiting impatiently for an answer. The Toronto-born singer has primarily remained silent on radio thus far. Now, though, a video titled Drop and Give Me 50 that purports to be a new Drizzy song is circulating on social media. He seems to be making jabs at Rick Ross, Metro Boomin, Kendrick, and other people in the song. The only problem is that AI might have been used to develop it. He seemingly rhymes, calling Metro Boomin out by name. Like the label boy, you in a scope right now. He also allegedly fires back at Kendrick. He even may have addressed J. Cole deleting his own response to Kendrick and apologizing. I don't care what Cole think that, that shit was weak as fuck. That's it for today, thanks for watching. Tell us what you think in the comment section and most importantly subscribe. See you.